Welcome to Untold Physio Stories, a podcast that informs and educates by connecting you to rehab industry leaders who share their candid successes and failures in business and practice. This episode of Untold Physio Stories is sponsored by Edge Mobility System. Edge Mobility System is your online site for everything a PT, OT, DC, MT, ATC, or fitness pro would need. Get certified in blood flow restriction therapy or training online. Check out our full modern manual therapy seminars, ISTM toolkit, edge suspension trainer, portable tables, and more. Untold Physio Stories listeners can save 10% by going to edgemobsys.com. That's E-D-G-E-M-O-B-S-Y-S dot com slash untold to save 10% off their first purchase. Edge Health and Tech Solutions. We do websites that work for you and give you an edge over the competition. Did you know that you have less than 10 seconds to capture someone's interest in your website before they click away? How about the fact that most people are accessing your website from their phone? Save thousands and get a fully mobile, appealing, and SEO-optimized website linked to your social media, email list, and Google My Business. All for one low price and no monthly fees. Why not keep doing what you do best in your business and allow us to handle the tech side? Let's get started. Find us at edgehealthandtech.com. Welcome back to Untold Physio Stories. I'm one of your hosts, Dr. E, with Modern Manual Therapy, Edge Mobility System, and Modern Rehab Mastery, our four-month online mentoring program. I'm one of the mentors in that, and my co-host is... Dr. Andrew Rothschild, um, with uh, Modern Patient Education, also involved with Modern uh, Rehab Mastery. How's it going, Andrew? It's going well, Urson. How are you? Good. Well, um, two weeks ago, I saw the son of one of my patients that I've talked about on the podcast before. And um, he was, he came in um, and I noticed he had a lot lumbar lateral shift right away. So he was shifted to the right. And, um, you know, normally when I think of a shift, I think hmm, this could be tough. Um, but when I asked him which side his pain was on, he also said the right. So uh, um, have you ever seen an ipsilateral lumbar lateral shift? Um, I think I have, but it's been a while and I, I yeah. know, I know from, at least from, you know, formal McKenzie training, it's usually a poor prognosis. Yeah. So for, for those of you guys who aren't familiar, haven't had McKenzie training, uh, lumbar lateral shift is when you're shifted to the side. Usually, um, it's discogenic, like true discogenic. There may or may not be neuroscience, but. Um, you know, the theory, working theory would be that the, or the mechanism is that the disc is actually protruding so much, potentially pinching on a nerve that you have to shift off of the symptomatic side to non-weight bear, um, because when you shift onto it, the disc protrudes more, um, and it may potentially uh, irritate a nerve root more or compress a nerve root more. And that's very biomechanical and not normally the way I think, but, you know, it does happen, especially in the lower lumbar spine where the posterior longitudinal ligament is more narrow. So if it's going to, something's going to protrude, it's going to be a nucleus uh, protruding or uh, potentially the annulus may rupture and the nucleus may actually, um, you know, extrude out and pinch a nerve root. So an ipsilateral lumbar lateral shift is when you shift toward that side. And the problem with that is that when you go to correct it with a standing shift correction or any kind of loading techniques, you, you know, the prime goal um, as McKenzie identified so many years ago, is that if someone shifted for more than five or six weeks due to uh, actually adaptive shortening of tissues and the longer, um, the potentially maybe even adherence of the disc to the nerve root, it, it's very difficult for a normal lateral shift at five to six weeks to correct via mechanical means. So an ipsilateral shift, you actually have to correct it by still straightening them out. But if they're actually shifted toward the side of the protrusion, when you shift away, that may increase the protrusion. And that's why historically it's been a difficult, they're, they're usually difficult cases. Um, do you remember my solution to the last ipsilateral, ipsilateral, contra, ipsilateral lateral shift that I saw that I, I teach in my courses? 
I don't remember, no. You know the LCAP test, the arm pull, lateral chain arm pull test? Yes. Well, that's how I discovered it, right? Because it was on a really huge guy. He was shifted laterally. I didn't have any kettlebells or anything, so I just pulled on his arm. Yeah, okay. I mean, um, so I did something similar for this one. I, I tried shift corrections. He couldn't tolerate it at all. His stand, I didn't, I don't normally test flexion. The first thing I do when I see someone shift, I take a quick history and I get right to shift correction. Um, so I, I just checked his extension. He said normally before this happened, extensions made him better. Um, his extension was very limited, super painful. So the first thing I did, he shifted to the right. I pulled on his right arm. He immediately said he got some relief from that, from his constant, like four to five out of 10 pain. And um, so I kept on pulling and pulling and pulling until he was straight. Um, in the other case, by the time that's all he needed to do, and it completely relieved his pain. In this case, uh, oh, and, and again, in the first case, um, their, their original guy from several years ago, he was able to do shift corrections after a couple of sets of arm pulls. In this case, he could barely handle the shift correction. So um, new for this time, because I was basically just coming up with stuff on the fly, I told him to lift me up off the ground as much as he could. And, you know, we're talking about a guy who works out, um, who's in construction, who's a pretty strong guy. So I'm crouched beside him, pulling on his arm, and I had him, you know, I gave him as much concentric resistance as possible. Um, and then he was able to eventually, like, lift me up to the point where I was on the my the balls of my feet you know from a from a squatting position he was lifting me up into a standing position and he kind of did that on and off and that also what felt pretty good to him after several sets of that he was finally able to do shift corrections um and we had to do various combinations of um contralateral kettlebell walks with pretty heavy weight you know held on his right to activate his left side uh, I had to teach him how to use a, you know, if he doesn't have kettlebells when he's at work or at home, find a counter surface, something that's at the right height so you can pull on it with your hand and side bend to the left. So he left with the, with a combination of those isometrics, farmer's carries on the right, um, and then working through shift corrections. He texted me the next day, he said it took him like a whole day of all of those combinations of lots of isometrics, farmer's carries and shift corrections to be able to even get through side glides. But by the time, every time he, he actually got through a set of 10 side glides, he would take through two or three steps, feel a click, and then he'd be shifted and have pain again. Mm. Right. So just over text, I said, all right, well, if your extension has improved, make sure that as soon as you do the shift corrections, throw in a set of 10, 10 extensions to see if that kind of holds off the click. Cause I don't know what the click was, whether it's some sort of lumbar instability or if it's like a disc protruding again. I don't know. It doesn't seem like you would feel that, but anything yeah. is possible. So after hammer, after throwing in the extensions and then he was able to find out that um, his jet ski was the perfect height for him to kind of pull and do a lot of those isometric side bends. Uh, after several days of that, he was able to um, fully extend after a set of side glides, after a set of farmer's carries and jet ski lifts. Um, <laughs> he only had like one out of 10 pain. Then he identified that the way he he sits all evening is shifted to the right. And when he sits in the car, he shifted to the right. When he squats at work to tie fences, because he they have a fence, fence construction company, he always squats on both both he you know with both heels up but if for some reason his right knee is more forward which causes him to shift to the right, right. so he's, he's been very mindful without even me telling him about all these positions also where he's shifted to the right um and the only thing i really added on the second visit was um different ways to stand and you know not to unload so much at work um, instead of doing it in a squatted position, do it in like a half kneel position. Um, when you, when you're standing, make sure you're not repeatedly shifted to the right, kind of stand with your arms behind you. And what I always do, it looks like I have to pee is I, I wave my pelvis back and forth and I have my, my hands behind me pushing to the ground to keep me upright. So between all the strategies, he was able to go back to work, um, with a very demanding job. Luckily it was just over the long holiday weekend and he was able to take several days off, which I also think was key to this case. That's wild. So you have the LCAP test. Now you can have the, uh, what are you going to call the, um, the jet ski lift exercise? 
Well, that's similar to like a self LCAP, but I mean, I think the big thing that really helped with him was not only the isometric LCAP, because normally that's just like isometric, but to actually have him, like to give him manual resistance and and then, you know, essentially do almost like oblique in standing as if you're like holding something heavy on the right. But I was able to grade the resistance and start off light and then give him heavier and heavier resistance so that I was able to kind of progressively recruit more and more muscle fibers. Yeah. So that was the, that was, I think the big key to this case that's, I don't know, I just came up with on the fly luckily and it worked. <laughs> that's good. I mean, that's very interesting. The fact that, you know, it's right-sided symptoms, ipsilateral the right shift and then making him, you know, it's counterintuitive, of course, making him carry this, the loads on that same side. But Right. But that's where, I mean, I knew, initially started with shift correction, but he could not right. tolerate it at all. Like I, I did like two reps to very much into the, not even in the mid range, like he was nowhere near straight and he almost doubled over. Yeah. So that's, that's basically what happened with the first time too. And I thought, well, this is like a wild, that's where I came up with the LCAP. I mean, you know, I, I, it was very counterintuitive, but I just thought, Hey, why not? I, let's see what happens when I pull on this side. I mean, it's either this or surgery for this right. guy. <laughs> right. Right. Um, Cause the first case actually had neuroscience and um, ridiculous pain. This one did not have ridiculous pain. So chances are it, it either was a far lateral disc or it wasn't a disc at all. And it was right. some sort of weird instability, but either way, both of them signs. were helped with, a, with an LCAP. And he didn't have any neuroscience at all? No. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but still, I think your standard kind of shift correction, I would have been, I would have been hard pressed just to hammer away at that and hope that the yellow lights or right. that the red yellow lights don't eventually turn into red lights. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So where can people find you, Andrew? People can find me uh, mostly on Instagram, sometimes Twitter at it, at a Rothschild PT. And of course, modern patient education, modern rehab mastery. All right. Thanks. Have a good day. Thanks. You too. Well, you can find me, uh, Dr. E at modern rehab mastery. That's our new online mentoring program. It includes modern manual therapy, modern patient education, and modern strength training. It's three months with three mentors. So one month with each mentor, four weeks, tons of modules, lots of CEUs, learn at your own pace for a month, then move on. Um, so go beyond the seminar. You also get chat room um, with your mentees and mentors and live Q and A's every week. Check out all my products, Edge Mobility System. We have the new Edge ISTM toolbox that includes the Edge Mobility Star and the OG Edge Mobility Tool our edge restriction system BFR cuffs. That's part of Dr. Kyle Coffey's Modern Strike Training BFR certificate. Uh, I hope to see you at a live eclectic approach course soon. That's Modern Manual Therapy um, in US, Canada, and South America. And uh, make sure to rate Untold Physio Stories five stars on Apple Podcasts. You could also subscribe on Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. And as always, you guys have an awesome day.